Now, in many textbooks and many depictions of microeconomics, there's a concept that comes up called an indifference curve. Now, I'm not going to use this concept very much in my class, but it does come up in readings and textbook. So I want to make sure that you have a good sense of this. You quite likely have uh, been exposed to this in a, in a basic microeconomics class, but some people haven't, so I want to make sure that you have a, have a good sense of it. So an indifference curve is really the consumption side equivalent of an isoquant. It is a combination of things that give the same output, or the same um, uh, outcome. If we're talking about a production side with an isoquant, that was combinations of inputs that gave, gave the same level of output. So take a look at that video to, to have the, a sense of the production side of things. Now, with indifference curves, it is combinations of goods that people buy, final consumers, so combinations of goods that provide equal satisfaction to the final consumer. Now, at its heart, there's a concept, an abstract notion of consumer utility associated with this. That the utility, the satisfaction, the happiness of a consumer depends on the consumption of these two goods, X and Y. And if you're talking about an indifference curve, you're talking about combinations of X and Y that give the same level of utility. Now again, this is an abstract notion. I, I, I couldn't write down my utility function. But if you, as we talk about this, I think you'll agree that it has some uh, relation to the abstract way in which people make decisions about trade-offs between consuming one good versus the other. So when we're talking about an indifference curve, we're talking about some fixed level of utility given different combinations of X and Y. And an important concept that we're going to see is diminishing marginal utility, which is another way of saying that if I hold the consumption of everything else equal and I increase consumption of just one of the, the goods, the extra satisfaction I get is going to diminish. This is, again, like um, uh, diminishing marginal productivity you know, on, the, on the production side. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind as we, as we go forward. And I'm going to depict this indifference curve on a graph with Y, consumption of Y on one axis, consumption of X on the other axis. And let me just draw this an indifference curve, and I'll come back to what it means in just a, in just a second. So this is this level of target cons, uh, utility, if you will, and different combinations of Y and X that will give you that, that level. So, for example, we might consume 10 units of Y and 4 units of X in order to get some level of satisfaction. Or, I might consume only four units of Y and eight units of X. Now, that's a, a trade-off that depends on a, a person's particular um, uh, view of, the, um, of these two goods. But, uh, so one of the things that you'll notice about this is that this slope is negative. That's another way of saying that if I decrease, decrease, drop the consumption of one thing, I've got to add something else. There's this negative relationship. Now, if I want to get a higher level of utility, okay, I can do so by increase the consumption of both goods potentially. So instead of 10 units of Y and 4 units of X, maybe if I consumed 10 units of Y and 6 units of X, I would be an entirely different level of satisfaction, a higher level of satisfaction. So um, what else do we need to do here? Ah, 
the um, the slope of the of an indifference curve. It turns out that that slope, which is the marginal rate of substitution in consumption, that is the, the substitutability between these two goods in consumption, that slope of the indifference curve with x on this axis and y on, on this axis is the marginal utility of x divided by the marginal utility of y. Now, I'm not going to go through the, uh, uh, the calculus uh, of this, uh, but this is, again, gives the trade-off between x and y in consumption. Okay, so let me talk about one final aspect, which is the relationship between these indifference curves and budget constraints. So a budget constraint is the limits, really provides the limits of what someone can buy. So your budget, if we take away the possibility of borrowing or lending, we're just going to set that aside. I take my income and I can spend it on good X or good Y. This is the value of my uh, con uh, consumption of X, the price of X multiplied times how much I buy. This is the price of Y times how much Y I buy. I'm exhausting all of my income between these two potential places to spend uh, my money. Now, I can rewrite this just by a little bit of algebra. as the following. I've just pulled the price of X over to this side, divided through by the price of Y. And we have an associated budget constraint for the consumer, where this point is the income divided by the price of Y. This is the total amount of Y that could be purchased if all of the income was spent on good uh, Y. So let's imagine that the price of Y is $10 per unit of Y and your income is $100. If you divide your income by this price, what you're going to get is that you can potentially purchase 10 units of Y if that's the only thing that you buy. So that's what this point would be. And similarly, this is the point uh, the, of X th uh, that you could buy if you spent all of your income on X. And the slope of this line is the relative price of X. It's essentially this angle. So this angle is PX over PY. Steeper the angle, the higher the price of, of X. So mathematically, it's the absolute value of that slope of that uh, of that uh, of that line. 
So here we have the budget constraint. And let's imagine an indifference, a set of indifference curves that reflect all the different possible levels of satisfaction for a consumer. So we've got one indifference curve, we've got another indifference curve, we've got another indifference curve, we've got another indifference curve. Each one of these things has a higher level of consumer satisfaction. Now, the highest level of consumption, or the highest level of satisfaction, the highest utility that the consumers can reach, given this budget constraint, is this point right here. Now, you might want to get up here to U4. You might, you'd be thrilled to have that level of utility. You might be thrilled to have that utility, but you can't afford it. This tangency is the, reflects the highest level of consumption that is consistent with your, um, with your budget constraint. Now, let's take a look at how we can characterize that area, uh, that point one. So one thing you should immediately notice about this, so at point one, the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the slope of the budget constraint. Okay, if two, if two things are tangent, if, like this, the slopes are equal. Now, we've already talked about how the slope of the indifference curve is the slope, or the ratio, of the two marginal utilities of x and y. We've got the slope of the budget constraint, and I know I'd be careful about this, it's about the absolute value, and the slope of the budget constraint is Px over Py. Okay, so that's what that's how we can characterize that particular point. This is another way of saying that at that consumer optimum, the price of X is equal to the marginal utility of X, the marginal benefit of consuming x, and the price of y is equal to the marginal utility, the marginal benefit of consuming y. Now this ought to be very familiar to you. In particular, if you go back and you think about our standard demand curve, If we had a price of X, we've already talked about how consumers will end, <clears throat> end up purchasing X where the marginal benefit of consuming the product just equals the price, right? So this is just where price meets the demand curve, okay? Standard uh, microeconomics. This is exactly this condition. The marginal utility is the marginal benefit. And we would have the same thing for good Y. Where the mar where you consumers buy the, the product up to where the marginal benefit equal the price. So in other words, and this sometimes, I think sometimes doesn't really dawn, dawn on people, this depiction of indifference curves and a budget constraint is simply two demand curves on the same graph. It's the same information. 
It's just done simultaneously. And what's going to be useful <clears throat> is that when you put the two together, the two markets together, you'll be in, in the indifference curve set up, you'll be able to really see clearly the trade-offs. So, for example, if the price of one good goes up, that's going to change the behavior for consumers in that market. So when we talked about tariffs and, and so forth, we focused on the, what happens inside this market. But the fact is, is that spills over into consumers' decisions to buy other goods. Now, that's not depicted here. It is depicted over in this graph. So, very useful tool for uh, a number of different uh, analyses of individual uh, of individual uh, consumer behavior.